Okay, what's up guys? My name is Dark Blue and this is my into depth video series, showing you my real experience when trying to dive deep into the mechanics of Evil West. I believe this will be an interesting story and some kind of reference when you play this game as well. You see, there are people showing their achievements after successfully diving into a game, but showing the experience before that, I am the only one. So give me a like and we are on the right. Last video covered my story of learning the basic combat of Evil West, but that's only the very first step into depth. And in this video, I shall show you the story of me exploring the core concept of this game. Clearly, I know Evil West is an action game, but what kind of action game is it? According to my experience so far, it's definitely not the same as Devil May Cry, which emphasizes creating diverse and difficult combos. At first, seeing so many different attack modes, all with their own charges, I thought Evil West might be about resource management. And if so, I would be able to do such a thing. By consuming some energy, my attack could generate the charge for my shotgun, then firing my shotgun into enemy's face could charge my dynamite, and finally using dynamite to give back some energy, completing the full circle. But sadly, this is not the reality. The core concept of Evil West lies elsewhere, but I have found it too. You see, with so many different attacks holding different features, they each suit a unique situation. For example, some attacks are for mob clearing, while some do better against single elite. And the core concept of Evil West is to pick the most suitable way of attack judging from current situation. So we should have strategies, and this video is about how I make and try to use my strategies. Now, what's the first step? I said we should choose the most suitable attack according to situation. But maybe we should first define situation. It's easy. Based on my experience so far, through the first few levels, I decide to define situation upon what type of enemy I'm dealing with. And I put enemies into only three types. Ranged enemy, many mobs, and elites. And I have a clear order of which ones to kill first. Ranged ones are annoying yet fragile, so they come first. And then I shall take care of many mobs so that in the end I can do solo against that remaining elite. With that being said, now I have three situations based on which type of enemy I'm currently dealing with. Now I am at the very beginning of level 6, so starting from here, I will try to make and use some strategies for each of the three situations. It might take some time though, because making strategies is one thing while putting it into actual use is another, and requires practicing. I go for ranged enemies first. There are only two kinds of ranged enemies I have seen so far, one aerial and the other one on the ground. Uh, the aerial one is easy to handle, I can just wait for them to use that special move and expose their weak points, and at this moment, one weak point shot is enough to kill them. The grounded one, on the other hand, brings some trouble. I have to spend some time performing a full combo to really kill them, and this time I have to spend is my weakness. After a few tries, I've decided to zapper put them out and do an electrocuted combo. This shall be the easiest way. So the strategy dealing with ranged enemies is rather simple and it doesn't take much time to practice it. Therefore, in the next level, level 7, I begin to consider how to fight many mobs. See, in most cases, there are many, many, many mobs when fighting against one, I shall also pay attention to the others, in case I get hit. It means I have to create a safe environment before actually going into the fight, either by zapper pulling one enemy out of the others, or by staggering everyone around me. I decide to try zapper pull first. After the pull, I can directly do electrocuted combo to kill it, since this combo can scare other enemies and create some safety. But in this way, I have to manually fight each enemy one by one and it gives me a feeling of inefficiency. So I also find a way to do AoE damage, cannonball punch. 
it, later in the game, I can even grab an upgrade so that the enemy hit by cannonball punch go exploding. Ever after this, cannonball has become my first mobbing choice. After this, I also tried starting with the crowd control by quick punch or crippling rod. Since now I am surrounded by mobs, the successive attack has to be AoE damage, or I'll get hit. I've tried shotgun, it's effective, but I doubt I don't really need a crowd control before using shotgun. Uh, uh, and I also tried a skill called Zapper Slam. It looks cool, but the area of damage is um, really small. Uh, another choice is the successive attack of Quick Punch if the corresponding upgrades have been purchased. Uh, this one is the most powerful among the three, but it costs extra energy. All in all, starting with crowd control is kind of effective, but shall not be my first choice. So far, I have tried some strategies for ranged enemies and melee mobs. They at least work to some extent. Uh, now I guess it's time to go for release. But before I really got some convincing results, I encountered a new problem. When there is an elite on the field, my old strategies become less effective. Why is this happening? Because elites won't be scared by electrocuted combo. So every strategy based on that now stops working. I need some new methods to keep myself safe, even when there is an elite. As for ranged enemies, I used to rely heavily on electrocuted combo to kill grounded ones. But now I think mm, using any weapons to kill them from distance is also acceptable. And as for melee mobs, I should also use less lever pool than electrocuted combo. But there is a good news. Cannonball punch seems to do extra damage to elites than mobs. So as long as there are mobs, I just throw them all to that elite. Now I even feel these mobs are on my side, though not out of their own willing. After these adjustments, I can now handle ranged enemies and melee mobs even when an elite is on the field. And the whole combat looks easier to me now. Maybe this is when games become more fun when played into depth. Anyway, after level 9, I have full knowledge of how to deal with ranged and melee mobs, but no idea about elites yet. There even emerge battles where there are multiple elites, and I don't know what to do. So I decide to find a new question to think about. How to effectively regenerate my energy? And by thinking about this question, I also got my answer to how to do solo on elites. But that shall be my next video. If you like my story, if you want to join me into depths of games, just like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, see you around.